Welcome to my channel. My name is Cynthia and you're watching Mountain Accent Sewing. Today is all about Project Dresser Girl. If you do not know anything about Project Dresser Girl, it is a charity event that is began by Mari at Mari Sews uh, as part of Dresser Girl Around the World um, to benefit that foundation to help get sewers like myself and others out there to make dresses for girls from infant size to age 12. Now, last year is the first year that I participated. I was a little intimidated by making a garment for a child um, because I had never sewn for little girls before. But I did make one dress last year and this year, I am going to send two. I had hoped to do more. I had ordered four of the, the tags and I'll show you the tag in just a moment. Um, they encourage you to put either a dress a girl around the world tag or one of the project dress a girl tags on your garment so that other people, when they see a child wearing your, the dress, they will know that they are protected by um, that uh, organization. Mari has a little four minute video telling you all about the, um, the rules and uh, do's and don'ts of what is allowed for this um, to contribute uh, a garment. I'm going to include that video at the end as I am coming out on day September 22nd, so the 22nd day, um, and everyone has shared this video, you may or may not have already seen it. So if you have seen it, then you do not have to re-watch it again, but if you haven't seen it, it's there at the end for you to watch. Also in the details below, I am going to uh, link a blog post that she wrote with lots of details that explains what types of fabrics are allowed, what types of fabrics are not allowed, and um, of course, like no zippers are allowed, no buttons are allowed. It has to be something that a child could pull over their head. Now it can have um, ties, it can't be like a ribbon that would um, unravel or something, but they recommend like a, the self fabric made tie. And I'm gonna share the pattern that I used for last year's um, dress that I made and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pattern that I've used this year. I'm gonna begin by sharing the pattern that I used for last year. It is a dress that pulls over the, the head and is more like a, a pheasant style dress. So I use Simplicity 2377 and I made a version um, I can't remember if it, I think it was like this one here. That is version A. I didn't do any rick right. I will try to find that picture and insert that dress, but it, I did make the one uh, like that in a size seven. And this particular dress uses a, elastic around the neckline and elastic in the arms. And um, it, it was an enjoyable make, but if you, um, do not enjoy sewing elastic. It can be a little fiddly and it does have that elastic, but it makes an adorable dress that is easy to pull on and pull off. I, I thought that they made this in two different size brackets because I went, I double checked the website, but all I can see is this um, size range from uh, size three to eight. And I had cut size seven. I think it was because I didn't have enough fabric for the size eight. I had hoped for this year uh, to do a larger size, something that would fit one of the older girls, because I know that is a category that is often overlooked and or fewer dresses are made for that uh, age bracket. And because it does um, require a larger amount of fabric or um, it doesn't, I don't think it would take any more time because, I mean, you've got a lot of um, the same 
uh, lines and it doesn't to stitch a little bit longer straight line is doesn't take any additional time really so I think it is more to do with the, the fabric and there's not a lot of uh, patterns out there either for the older age group I do recall browsing trying to find some um, patterns that would fit um, a, a, a a youth of uh, closer to size or age like 11 or 12 and I couldn't I, I had trouble find it and this pattern that I used this year is Simplicity 2241 now I have it in the size 3 to 6 however it does come in a there is also a 7 to 14 age bracket but I did not um, have that pattern uh, to hand. This is the one that I found and purchased and I cut out the largest size available and it is a size six and I may I cut out two um, I cut out two dresses now there are several variations and this is also I don't know if you can see this a learn to sew pattern and you have the option of um, doing ruffles on the on on the sleeves, or just keeping it simple. And there's also the option of doing ruffles at the bottom. Now this version here, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it does look like it has ties. But however, it is a um, a mock tie. It actually is just a strap that goes over, and then you can make a tie to a bow to fit around that. And so essentially, um, they're, they're the same. But the neat thing about this pattern is that it gives you lots of options for embellishment. Uh, not only do you have the option of adding the little ruffle on the sleeve, it gives you, tells you how to add a, a decorative piece in the, the front yoke. It also gives you, tells you how to do rickrack if you wanna do rickrack. And uh, you have the option to do one pocket or two pockets. However, I included two pockets on both of my dresses because most of these uh, children that are going to be wearing these dresses, they don't have a place to store their personal belongings and they carry them with them in their pockets. And so I feel like two pockets was better than one. And I did not do, I don't know if you can see it, it has like a gathered uh, you really can't tell in here but it's a gathered uh, pocket I chose to cut um, like a more of a square rectangular shape pocket and and I also where this has you just do a single cut I doubled the the pocket piece to make it stronger uh, and attached it let me uh, go on and tell you um, about my dresses. I'm not finished. Um, I'm hoping to get them finished this weekend. And I'll talk more about that as we're uh, looking at these dresses. This is dress number one. And I have chosen this uh, pretty uh, colorful a blue dress with lots of uh, retro looking flowers on it and I chose a yellow as an accent for the pockets and there is the Project Dress a Girl label. That is a label that I purchased from uh, Mari at her um, shop Inspired Leather. I did purchase four labels in case I have time, had time to do four but I don't know that I'm going to uh, be able to get more than these two completed. Um, because I already had other things that I was committed to doing this month. Um, on this particular one, and I'm not sure if it's showing up, um, I just used a decorative stitch across the pocket. And then um, up here at the yoke, it has you stop top stitch, and I also did that same decorative stitch, but it does not show up very well. And you can see I'm to the binding. And this is my least favorite step of this pattern. I, um, 
in hindsight, I wish I had just cut a double um, yoke so that I could have uh, made it just totally enclosed without having to rely on a, a binding. So um, I'm gonna attach the binding here and on the armholes. Um, now the the dress is very simple. You've got your basic kind of A-line shape, and then the the front uh, bot or the front piece and the back piece are both gathered to fit into the yoke. And I chose to do just a simple straight line hem. And um, on the inside, I did serge and overlock all my seams that are the ones that are visible, even the ones in the um, inside here so that it is, um, those seams are not gonna unravel. That is one version that I made. Now the other, the other dress I did um, pretty much the same, and I had pinned on my neck binding, but I have not uh, sewn it yet. And I used uh, a beautiful fall-looking um, fabric that has lots of uh, colors and this um, coral color. And I did have some rickrack that. Um, I thought went well with that. So I attached rickrack across the top of uh, both the front and the back bodice. I did a rickrack on the pockets. And again, that's a double line pocket with a Project Dresser Girl label. And I also did a row of rickrack at the bottom hem. I would love to have uh, used rickrack on the other one. I just didn't have any rickrack that uh, would uh, coordinate with it. And like I said, this particular pattern in the instructions, it tells you how to do the rickrack. It tells you how to do um, the embellishment down the front. It tells you how to gather the pocket, but it gives you um, several you know, ideas of ways that you can make each dress different. And I like that, um, and like here is my instructions on how to do the binding, and I noticed that after you attach it, they um, tell you to clip it before you turn it. So I'm to that step of my two dresses, and I hope to finish them this weekend. Now, I was thinking about that same pattern that maybe for next year, um, I was thinking I might even be able to um, lengthen these yoke pieces, make them longer, and cut a double, and fix it to where they tie, did tie, actually tie. I think that would be really cute. I, I've never done a lot of hacking, but that was something that came to me when I was uh, working on this, that if, in hindsight, that I thought, well, that would have looked really cute also. But I definitely uh, will use this pattern again in the future. I like it better than the other one, even though um, a lot of people do like the one with the elastic. Um, and also, um, Alicia at Thought Thoughtfully Creative, she has a free pattern that you could check out. I know there's some other free patterns out there. And go check out some of the other vloggers that have vlogged this month that uh, some of them have shared some of these other patterns. And some of them have also uh, shared the pattern that I have used and the one that I used last year. Um, yesterday um, on the vlogging tour was Yvette from Blossom Sandwich. Today, um, September 22nd, I'm sharing today with Mari. Um, she is doing a, a live unboxing, so go check out that video. Hopefully, she's inching closer to her uh, goal of, I think it's around 7,000. Last year, uh, there was around 5,000 dresses. And so hopefully we will gain another uh, couple of thousand dresses this year. And tomorrow is Practical Stitches. So go check out her video. And now I am going to insert Mari's video. It's me again, editing Cynthia. 
and I'm having technical difficulties. For some reason, and I'm sure it's an error on my part, I am unable to download Mari's intro video. I'm gonna link it in the description box below, so if you haven't seen it already, please go over to her channel and check out that intro video. And thank you to everyone who has joined me in doing um, the Project Dress Girl vlogging tour and all those sewers out there who are making dresses for little girls around the world. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.